Uh, so we're in sort of a, a weird transitional phase right now because uh, beginner breakdown is being phased out and uh, coming up shortly here, we'll be doing a strategy class. The working title for the moment is uh, Strategy Sessions with Jonathan Schrantz. So you can expect that coming next month. So we'll do you know, something a little bit, uh, bit different. I do want to read what uh, Mike Kummer has already written for the description of my new strategy class that'll be coming up pretty soon. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty epic, it's classic Mike Kummer. Jonathan Schrantz will guide you to superstardom with excellent strategic strategies. Suggested rating 1500 and below. So we will be discussing in the upcoming weeks some strategic strategies. So if you were, if you were looking for some unstrategic strategies, um, that'll have to be a different class. So that's what, uh, that's what will be happening soon. And you at home, you could influence this class. If you've got a, a good catchy name that has strategy in the title, alliteration is preferred, then uh, let me know and maybe you'll influence the course of our YouTube channel forever. So uh, OK, but today we will sort of keep it old school beginner breakdown style, and we'll analyze some games. I had uh, uh, several people request some games, so we'll, we'll go over them. Um, a gentleman named Greg sent in two of his games, so we'll go ahead and go over that first. Uh, some people in the audience sent in a game, so hopefully we have time to get to that one too. And okay, Greg said some, some nice things about the show, and uh, then he said, so this is one of the games he wrote. So I was going to go over my Blitz games and such stuffs from Lie Chess and old games from my first tournament. I found two games that Jonathan could analyze on his next episode of Analyze This, which could be the name of this class. Nobody really knows at this point. Uh, we've had a class called Analyze This in the past, so who knows. Uh, first game, I had white in a 5 plus 2 game. So it was 5 minutes plus 2 second increment is what it sounds like. So a relatively quick game, and uh, we'll jump to it here. We'll see Greg had the white pieces, and uh, he played E4. Very good. And we got a Sicilian. All right, so so far... It's looking pretty exciting. All right, knight f6, d6, and we do get an open Sicilian. Very good, this promises to be exciting. And uh, we'll see what variation we get here in just a second. And uh, okay, in this position, there's so many moves, a6, g6. Uh, last night we looked at the move e6, for those that were here for that class. But uh, the classical variation was chosen in this game. Okay, knight to c6, very, very good looking move. And OK, this move strikes me as a little odd now, what was uh, played here by white. White played the move bishop to e3. So it's, it's sort of like an English attack. This is very popular against the knight, or if it's very popular um, against the Scheveningen, which of course I'm not pronouncing right, but uh, you know what I'm talking about. Instead of the knight on c6, you played the move e6. Um, it's, I know it's not supposed to be fantastic against this particular move order, I don't know what black played here, but uh, so black didn't. Uh, black actually played e6, so it looks like it's it's going to be a shaving ingot after all, which is nice. We just talked about that that last night, so that would be interesting. Um, okay, I think this this move order is supposed to be met by this move, knight to g4, which is what you typically want to think about whenever you uh, whenever they put a bishop on e3, and obviously when you don't have a pawn here, so your knight is protected. And um, knight, knight to c6 is just a better move in these positions in general than the move a6. So even after some normal moves that you might see in a, in a knight orf, this sort of thing happens all the time. But now this move comes with tempo because you're attacking the knight on d4. And I mean, I don't, I don't really know all the theory. I just know this is how you're, you're supposed to, to play this position. And uh, OK, so it should be a relatively better version than you would get if you played some other Sicilians. And I think here the, the two moves are either bishop e6, and you can even consider the crazy looking bishop takes c3, which, OK, you're giving up a, a very important dark squared bishop, but uh, it's actually a playable line for black. But uh, let's go see what happened. So instead, that, that, that didn't happen. Um, the, game in, the move in the game was e6. So yeah, so we get sort of the shaving and pawn structure that we're, that we're now very familiar with. And uh, OK, so I think if he wants to play in typical you know, English attack style, he should play the move f3 here, followed by queen d2 and castle and queen side, and then g4, h4, and you attack on the king side. And if black castle's over there, you hope that you checkmate him. That's the common way. He decided instead to go for a plan with f4. So we would lead to just sort of the classical lines that we saw last night if we just played bishop to e2, 
followed by either F4 or castling and then F4. So I'm wondering if there's any way to, uh, to possibly take advantage of the fact that bishop e2 wasn't played just yet. Um, so perhaps if there is a way to try to punish this, it might be a move like e5. The point is now I can play knight to g4 in a lot of cases here. So, uh, you know, whatever you, whatever you do here, I'm going to play knight to g4. Um, but okay, if I, I would probably look at that. If I didn't really see that that worked at all, I'd, I'd play what was played in the game. Bishop e7. Okay, very good. And uh, a move we haven't really talked about before, but uh, a move that makes a little bit of sense here, I think. A little queen to f3. And we saw last night, okay, often the queen will maneuver to the g3 square, where she puts a lot of pressure, especially on e5 and in the center. And uh, okay, so this is just another way to get there. It is pretty typical in Sicilians like this. And maybe you'll even get to play g4 before you play queen to g3. Um, okay, so it's a, a typical enough move. And now black played e5. Okay, perhaps he is thinking of knight to g4 stuff in the, the future here. And it looks like, okay, so he, white well, took first on e5 and then he took on c6, which seems a little inaccurate. So the game went like this, he, uh, he took and then he took here. So you might very well have just started with this move if that was your intention, you could take here. And then take here. I mean, maybe you'd want to consider playing f5, but OK. If you wanted this position, this perhaps is the way to do it. Unless white was figuring in this position, um, OK, I don't mind knight takes, because that would be the alternative. Um, but would he mind knight takes? Not really sure what he had in mind. OK, I mean, this guy is a little weak, but you know, so is this guy. And I don't really, I don't know. I mean, you've allowed this variation. I don't really know what it. Maybe I would have considered playing this way as, as black. But uh, OK, so he, in the game, we got, we got this position. OK, seems fair enough. And now bishop to d3. All right, so I'm not sure that that's the optimal square for the bishop. Um, I don't see what was why he avoided this move. You know, bishop to c4, that looks like the, the more active diagonal. Um, and sometimes black might play bishop to e6, and he'll allow the doubling of, of pawns. Probably for the moment, black will just castle. Uh, but okay, I don't, I don't quite see the, the point of putting the bishop on d3, so I think that's a little timid. And uh, okay, but perhaps, I guess maybe he played it so he could castle queenside. I guess that must be on his, his agenda. But obviously, we need to be careful not to just uh, castle right away, because I'm seeing stuff like bishop to g4. So that's stuff we have. So you probably, not only is it, you have to put your bishop on, on d3, but then you probably have to play a move like h3 before you can castle queenside, something like that, uh, which is a bit slow. And in most lines in the Sicilian, when you do play e4 and f4 together, in a lot of lines, you do end up castling kingside, which is just perfectly fine. So, OK, but it, it seems like he has his queenside castling on his mind. And let's see. So, OK, so in this position, bishop to g4. OK. And so this is interesting, too. He played queen g3, attacking the e-pawn, and black castled. So who wants to take the e-pawn? Let's see if he took it. OK, so he played h3. So that's what we'll, we'll come back to. But let's, let's just take it for a second, just, just to have some fun. Um, so I, I mean, I'm considering bishop d6. I'm considering rook e8. Uh, and in, intuitively, it just kind of feels pretty risky to take it. We're not castled yet. Um, we do get moves like bishop d6. I can go to d4. I can go to g5. Those are the only squares I see. Um, I don't, and I don't, you know, see exactly how we would get our pawn back immediately or something. It just, it just sort of feels like black has a lot of pressure here. So, yeah, I think uh, it's, it's wise not to just rush in and take that. So instead, he, he played h3. Yeah, if, yeah. If there's any questions or anybody sees Sorry. anything, yeah. Do you, a pawn's a pawn. A pawn's a pawn. All right. So Mario, Mario Roper. 
Yeah, you gotta gotta risk it to get the biscuit, Mario Rovera. All right, and then yeah, maybe I don't I don't even quite see it, but it just feels like there's there's so much pressure here. Um, I just there's there's something. But uh, but you know, to make sure it was a it's a true beginner breakdown, we need to make sure we were completely unprepared for this lecture. That was important. That was important. All right, so that wasn't taken. H3. Okay, so this is what happened in the game. I think it's a decent decision. And the bishop left its natural diagonal. So, yeah, okay, he went, he went back to h5. And I feel like it's sort of a general rule that I, I never hear any other teachers ever talking about. But the bishops, they tend either, if they're going to a long diagonal, if they're not coming out that way, sorry, if they're coming out the, the front door, not the back door, they tend to want to stay on their natural diagonal. This is, this is kind of where they like to be. So I think a move like bishop to e6 makes a lot of sense because now you're already taking control over the c4 square, so white can't play bishop to c4 himself, um, which, okay, and you know you don't want that bishop on d3 forever if this pawn's not going to move away. So I probably would have stayed. I like my pieces in the center, and I like to stay on the natural diagonal. The only reason I would go back here, which happened in the game, was if I was going to get some pressure on e4. But, uh, okay, I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. So we'll see. Also, one thing I just noticed too about h3 is, is sometimes I can play here. That would be if my, my knight were out of the way. So actually, I wonder, I wonder if there's some funny knight move. I want to do funny knight move stuff. Knight e5? You said, you said, e, you said e5? Or D5. And Ben Simon's mad because I, I turned the sound off, so he doesn't get to hear the illegal click. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think this this is a, a good way to do it. And yeah, you got to worry about about this here. So. Uh, yeah, I think this would be an interesting way. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, then we yeah then we get this. This looks yeah this looks unpleasant. So yeah, I think this. So perhaps there was some some funny stuff here that we could have uh, attempted, but let's see what was played in the game. Bishop h5. Oh, and per perhaps white did notice these things. He played a little queen f2. OK, so perhaps perhaps he did notice this, this little trick. And uh, OK, again, I, another move I don't like. Um, I, don't, I don't know the, the rating range of, of these players. But uh, OK, rook c8, which putting the, putting the rook right behind the pawn, I suppose the idea is maybe he's going to play c5, c4. But as soon as you play c5, you're giving up control over some of these light squares. So a knight might be able to jump into d5 at some point. If you play c5 immediately, maybe I'll play bishop c4, stopping your pawn, and then I'll, I'll really control d5, which will be uh, nice for me. If I were to move this rook, and maybe I would, I would probably just go here to b8, because that seems to, to make a lot of sense. And in a lot of lines where we're castling, it won't, it won't let me do it, obviously. But when you do that, then you know you have to worry about threats like uh, queen. Yeah, queen to a4. Very, it's a risky move, but you know, I've uh, I've I've directed a lot of scholastic tournaments, so it's it's not out of the realm of possibility. But uh, okay, queen to a5, and you have to start worrying. We'll have to imagine the king is castled over there. About some sacks here on b2. Those are very typical. Um, so we'll you got to kind of worry about that. I mean, I think castling kingside should be on White's agenda. It seems a little bit safer. Uh, but we'll see what happened. So here he played g4. Now are there any tricks? Again, yeah, this is, I want to move my knight out of the way and, and play bishop h4. OK, so this move doesn't, doesn't work, because uh, here we could, we could block. But OK, we can, can still consider moves like knight to d5 again. Mm -hmm. So the threat is bishop to h4. And then, yeah, you got to do something about that. I don't know, castle or something. But then you, and then you lose your, your, your bishop, which you probably don't want to do. And now you're, you know, you played g4, so now it's, it is kind of risky to be castled over there. So we're any, there were no tricks played. Um, yeah, rook, yeah, rook c8 happened. g4, bishop, bishop g6. And I guess the queen. Really liked f3 because she went back there. So this, okay. 
I don't entirely see the point of this move. I think, I mean, I probably would have castled kingside here. Um, it, is, it is a little dicey, but I do want to get my, my king out of the center. Does anyone else see, like, better moves? If you see better moves, let me, let me know. But, okay, queen f3. And, uh, okay, so black went for it. He played c5. Um, which, okay, I think this is something we can look forward to. And maybe this is why the queen is on f3 to protect the e4 pawn so that you can play bishop c4 in this position. You think white's thinking about yeah. h4, h5? Yeah. And then he wanted to play. <clears throat> okay. So he did castle. Look at that. He castled. Okay. I, I assume you could play c4 right away if black, if that's what you were intending. Queen a5 makes a lot of sense. Uh, maybe you'll play rook b8 on the next move and then take on b2 if it works. You'll have to make sure it works. <clears throat> um, okay. He played g5. Okay, so you could move your knight. Um, you could go backwards. Um, you probably don't want to go here because it's on the same file as the rook. I think I would move my knight, but he uh, he played bishop h5. So does this does this work? So I'm going to move my queen. And if you take on d1, I take on f6, and I'm threatening mate. And then I'll have time to take back the bishop on d1, which which I think should be good for white. Yeah, g5 might be good. Yeah, maybe we do. Maybe we should just, you know, put the knight back or something. But uh, okay, this is what was played, and so we'll see. Yeah, so it looks like looks like this sequence did happen. So, queen g3, and again, I suppose you can move your knight. But here, white's going to get two pieces for the rook. So that's that's a pretty good deal. Um, he took here. We took here, with a with a nice little threat. I guess black saw it. And uh, okay, so he took here. So okay, that's a that's a pretty good deal for White. We got now we got the two bishops, uh, we got two pieces for the exchange, and we got the open G file now. So okay, I, I quite like this now for for Team White over here. C4. I was thinking, um, rook B8. Rook B8. Yes, yeah, your and your idea is to take on B2. Yes. And, and it and it works. Let's. Let me pass. Um, you want to take here? Uh, Order. Queen, queen takes what? Uh, no. Queen takes. No. Queen takes. Um, yeah. So I don't. I don't know if it works, but I mean, rook takes b2 might be. A little queen b4. It's kind of annoying. That's a good move. That's a good move. Yeah, it's kind of an annoying move because I yeah. So I guess I have to start getting ready. <laughs> I'm going to get ready. I'm going to get ready. Here I go. No, yeah, that's actually quite a quite a scary threat. Yeah, but h4. h4, man. Yeah, bishop c4 would be much better. Okay, so yeah, here, let's uh, let's give you rook b8. Okay, bishop c4. But uh, but I don't know, maybe still queen b4. If bishop b3, c4. Um, yeah, I wish I hadn't given you control over d5. That's yeah. That seems kind of mistake. Okay, so this this is where we were, and now c4 should be two, and now rook to b8. He played rook to d6 here. Um, okay, but he played this move. Yes, this move strikes me as a as a little bit weird. So I don't know if it works, but I guess it's fun to it's fun to give away our pieces. See if it works. I'm assuming you can't just take my bishop, but uh, let's let's have some fun and let's do this. Oh well, then at least minimum I'm on your rook too, if I'm not checkmating you. So, okay, but I mean I assume that you can't do this, because then I'm going here. And then I just have to figure out how to check my you. Can defend. Work F to B8. Well, here, here we have to not get checkmated with white. Okay, so let's, let's play here. 
I don't know. I mean, this might be this might be fine. <laughs> There's I mean, this 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 might be fine. Both those moves look pretty good. So after rook d6, I don't know why uh, he didn't take on b2. Let's see what he what he decided to do here. Um, bishop e7 was played. Okay, this also might be might be fine. Um, what would you guys play here with white? I think he played the bishop h6. Yeah, I think that's that's the obvious move here. So you probably have to play g6. And here he played queen f3, which is a trick. And it looks like it worked. We'll, we'll come back to this. But it looks like his trick worked. Because he went here, and black took this. Yeah, yeah. OK. And then, yeah, so black resigned here. So it was a trick, and it worked. So, so that's good. But I wonder, OK, so I, first of all, let's try to find a better move for black. <laughs> I'm trying to take on b2 still. Uh, I think I still want to take on b2. And you're not, you're not required to take it. Bringing this one back to, yeah. to d2 or where? Yeah. And then is, is a knight d5 like a big threat here? No, I mean, this might not be bad, but you know, obviously anything is better than, than falling for the little little trap here. <laughs> yes, this, yes, that was obviously a, a big mistake. And it was a, it was a blitz game, so it's understandable that uh, those things happened. Um, and yeah, I think this was a, a pretty good game here. I wish. We had seen a couple more sacrifices from Black's end in this game, but I think uh, the player with white, he played reasonably well. I don't know. I guess I would, I would gauge his strength at somewhere around 1,400, 1,500 strength. So um, yeah, I think that was a, a, a pretty decent game. Um, but now we'll, we'll see. I got so many games here. We could see another Greg game. We could see a game from somebody else. So hopefully we get to cover uh, Greg's game. And thanks for sending it in. It was a, it was a very good, entertaining game. Glad we got to go over it. And uh, right before we began here, right before we began this uh, class, I got a score sheet here from Mario Roper. So this was a game that he played against in the uh, the Bill Wright Open against a player rated 22.03. So Mario, what's your what's your rating? Okay, so it's a 1300, and you had black, um, and you're taking on a 2200. So okay, and. Uh, Mario did not win this game, unfortunately, but uh, <laughs> but it's uh, but it's okay. I think there was a position he he wanted to talk about, so hopefully we we get to examine it. So knight f3, and uh, Mario decided for a little b6. Is this something you play often? Very often. Very often. All right. So if you're prepping for Mario Roper, get ready for that early b6. And White decided here on the move e4. So it's, it's not quite going to be sort of an Owens defense, where sometimes you've already gotten the moves d4 in. So after you attack the pawn, you have the move like bishop d3 to protect it. So that, that won't be happening here. So now the pawn is attacked, and white has to uh, make a decision. And his opponent, who if only were here in the audience, he could, he could tell us about it. Uh, he played the move d3. So it looks like he's, he's probably going in for a, a King's Indian attack. Because I, yeah, I remember seeing some of this game. So he's going to play g3, bishop g2, and get a, get a king's Indian attack style position. So yes, we are putting a, uh, a pawn in front of the bishop, but it's sort of a, a well-known position that we're going to get here. Um, let's see, d, d3, e6. Very reasonable. And OK, we got a couple developing moves here. And now here you played the move h6. Which I don't, I don't entirely understand. Um, maybe if you're trying to play knight f6, are you worried about like e5 or something? Maybe you should play a move like d6. Yeah. Um, why did you, why did you play h6? I just, I know it's a, it's a bad habit. Bad habit. <laughs> okay. I mean, did you think? I mean, even if you, you played here, and we'll imagine e5 doesn't exist. Um, were you worried about a knight or a bishop going to g5? Yeah. Yeah? That's just a bad habit. It's a bad habit. Yeah, so, yeah, I think, because you are playing more in, like, the open section, and you're playing, you know, significantly higher rated people now. Yeah. So, 
yeah, so these are like the little moves that you probably try to want to avoid. Um, White Castled. And knight to c6. I guess if I were playing it, I would probably want to have my pawn on c5 before I brought my knight out. But OK, you put him here in front of the pawn. And sometimes you do get weird formations um, in the Owens where it's you, play, you put your pawn here on e5 at some point, and then the knight is on c6. And you get a really weird sort of Rui Lopez where you fianchettoed your bishop, though sometimes you can make it work. You can get sort of weird stuff like that, but uh, I don't know if, if that's what we're going to see in this game. Um, knight to c6, knight to c3. OK, seems typical enough. And now d6. Yeah, this seems like a, a move you're going to have to play before you play knight to f6. But now your opponent does get the center. So you've you have spent a little bit of time, you know, with h6 and knight to c6. You've you've not really uh, attacked the center very much in the opening moves. So I think yeah, this this poses you some some interesting problems. And now you played an interesting move that I probably wouldn't have considered. Not that it's bad, but uh, after knight f6, does he uh, is e5 or d5 really annoying here? Yeah, which which one scares you the most? E5. All right. So probably you want to trade queens because you know you're a little bit behind in development, and he's got the center. So I don't yeah I don't know what he would have would have played. If he were here in the audience, what do you think he would have played? Not sure. Not sure. Not sure. <laughs> Yeah, so it's interesting. Yeah, it feels like white must have something here right before black castles. D5, yeah, this is sort of what I was a little bit more worried about as, as black. I mean, I can, I can take once. You take him with the pawn? Yeah, with the pawn, but so I can Mm-hmm. And yeah, I don't know where, OK, I mean, I guess I'm going to try to try to come back into the game this way. I'll go back to D7. And yeah, black's pawn structure kind of makes a funny impression. And OK, the bishop is, is certainly locked out here. Uh, yeah, so I think it's kind of annoying. So in the game, what Mario played here was bishop to a6. All right, so you have attacked the rook. Um, and after the rook moves, I'm trying to understand if this is a better square. Certainly, there's a lot of stuff in the way, but let's let's be careful here. Um, okay, I don't yeah I don't really know what the long term term future of this guy is. I'm just kind of worried that now his stuff isn't protected, but we'll see what happened. Queen d7. Are you so your castle in queen side? And now. Yeah, so you're about to castle, so now it's his time to, to do something forceful in the center before you, you get over there. So d5 happened. OK? Yes, yeah, so it, feels, it feels quite pleasant for, for white here. You played knight e5. Now an interesting move. He, I guess he saw you do this. So he knew he knew this maneuver. You you had already taught him. Bishop h3. See, so yeah, this is you teaching the master. All right, he learned from the best. Okay, now there's no knight g4 stuff, and there is a lot of pressure on e6. So I think this this move is actually a a very good move. Um, I think it's yeah, that's a very very good move. Um, it says castles kingside, but okay, obviously obviously you went queenside. <clears throat> um, yeah, so now knight d4. There's there's a lot of pressure on e6. He's also thinking maybe like f4, and then he can put his knight on c6. So you're not you're in a lot of danger here already. Danger. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you got your yeah your king and queen on the same diagonal here, so you got your your king out. But now what to do after this move? Um, this just. You know, this is this is just bad. Maybe even even winning for white. You know, this is just this is not good. 
So if you take, he can probably take back with his knight, I assume. So this didn't happen because that you were going to take with the knight or the bishop. They're both they're both so good. Or you'd play f4 and not do either one of them. And then there's, yeah. OK, so I kind of understand you just you decided to give him a pawn because there looks like there's a lot of danger if you take that. In, in, so yeah, so in this position, you didn't play f4 because of c5. But I mean, yeah, you can probably take here, right? And then you, you didn't like this one? This looks pretty good. Maybe I don't have to take there. Maybe I could do something else. But I don't know. It looks pretty good. To draw it. Yeah, it does. It is like a little, a little loosey goosey because there's some weaknesses in your camp. Mm hmm No, I mean I think it's just yeah. It makes makes total sense here to take on e6 because uh, if he takes back, it, did you did you have something in mind if he took back? Did you know which way you were gonna take here? Mm hmm <laughs> Yeah, you can take. Yeah, you can take with either thing, and okay, they both look pretty good. F4 is probably good. Ignoring everything, like I'll just develop my pieces. Maybe that's even good. Yeah, you can probably do anything here. Also, yeah, how do you protect it? Like, let me just just pretend. I'm not not making the best move here or anything. I'm just like, just still, what are you gonna do about e6? You know, so it's it's yeah, so very pleasant. Which is why Mario decided to uh, give up a pawn. Okay, queen e8, and okay, so instead of taking, now you played f4. Is this was it this position, Mario, where you wanted to talk about here, or is that is it coming up? Yeah. Is uh, this position? Yeah. Were you talking about? You were looking at this. Yeah. Did you have a line? So you were just wondering about what would happen here. So maybe you're. On a great day, you'd play c5. His knight would move away, and then you'd fork him. Um. But I, yeah, I don't know what happens after this. But okay, so that. So that didn't happen. After this, he played uh, f4. All right, not a lot of places to go. So you're sort of compelled to play the move c5 here. And the knight went to f5. Um, is there anything else? I mean, knight f5 seems. Knight f5 seems quite good. Okay. Knight f5. G6. So you're begging him to take. Also, you probably don't want him to take on g7. Man, this is. Yeah, this is not good at this point. So, okay, he took. Your knight is still hanging. You took this knight. And he took here. <laughs> Yeah, terrible. How could you ruin your pawn structure like that? Just, just awful. Just awful. Okay. But when you're winning lots of stuff, <laughs> it's yeah. pretty good. Okay. So black took's here. So, uh, you know, we got a little white, black, white. It's pretty good. Pretty good. It's pretty. It's a pretty picture. So you, are, you guys are chess artists out there, so that's good to know. Um, after this, I'm sorry, what was this? D takes. Takes queen. What happened after this move? Oh yeah, it must be it must be here because yeah, the next move is. Mm -hmm. Yes, the next move is is this move here. Mm -hmm. Did you think of another move and get your queen out or something? Just <laughs> queen e two or something. Queen g four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't know. Can I? Can I be so crazy? So if you take uh, on f5, maybe I'll take back with my knight, and then maybe I get to jump into d4. You know, I mean, yeah, you can even play queen e2. Did you have? You have a suggestion here? You don't know about f5? I'm I'm getting crushed. What do you want me to do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just 
I'm hoping I get to go here and then I get to go here and maybe I get a good night. It's just, it's a, it's a dream. It's a dream, you know? <clears throat> okay. So instead, uh, this move was played. Very, very good. Uh, and you took back. Mm hmm. Okay. And yeah, so after this, yeah, I like his. Bishop c8. This looks, this looks good. Can I somehow get your get your bishop? <clears throat> right. Yeah. So yeah. If you ever have this, I'm here. So I'm I'm trying to get this piece back. Yeah. So rook f1. So can I just go back to e8? Is that what? One queen's mm -hmm. so you were looking at this during the game queen takes rook and then so I can either take or I can should I, should I take here first I'm in check so you so is the answer, the answer is no all right which and then and then I don't know how to take back okay Okay, so this would happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still quite difficult for, for white to win. And Okay, at least we got this, this square. But, yeah, but yeah, what, yeah, what happens on this one? Why didn't you play this move? Did you consider this move? Because, okay, because yeah, again, yeah, here's, here's the idea. The queen gets trapped. And you know, so okay, if she goes back, then we we obviously get to take this. This looks a little bit better. I don't even I don't even know who's better now. I don't know what's going on anymore. Maybe black's better. So maybe this was your this was maybe this is your big chance. You know, taking on a master Mario. That's it. <laughs> See, because you knew you you probably know my rule of always play queen d8. But you didn't know of the, the corollary, always play queen e8. Yeah, that's... <laughs> what was the time situation at this point, Yeah, so yeah, the question is, what was your, your time situation? Yeah, plenty of time. Plenty of time? Just didn't... Yeah, I mean, there's lots of stuff. You can take the rook, you can take the queen. Some stuff that I leave all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. I had so many options. Right. I didn't know if I... So queen g4 is just going to the piece completely, right? Yeah, I, I guess he, perhaps you just you just didn't see. Did you just not? Did you see this move or? It's a hard move to see, you know. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, here so yeah you have yeah little queen e eight, little queen e eight. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so instead, uh, you played here. Okay, so. White's, White's off the hook a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so the queen's attacked. Um, H4. So, yeah, so now after G5, the queen's not trapped. We have H5. Um, and then there's, yeah, then it's just not trapped. Um, G5, that was played. G5, queen H5. And uh, you went right back. Okay, so yeah, you didn't trade. Whoop. You went back over here. And then, and then the bishop moved and you checkmated him. Oh, darn, it didn't happen. Um, after a little bishop a6. Okay, he developed his pieces. Darn. I hate when they just develop their pieces. Queen b4. And now, uh, an interesting thing, I guess. I think most people will consider doing it with this rook, but okay, he went this way. Right, the rook was attacked. Um, so he moved it, and he'll probably get to play moves like a3 and b4 in the future, opening up your your king side, or your king on the queen side over here. Um, all right, your bishop just he can't really decide. You know, he's trying to keep his options open in life. Uh, he's willing to explore new possibilities. You know. Uh, okay, that's kind of annoying. And this is it. Okay, and you played C4. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah I don't really know where to <coughs> put the knight, but okay, c4, <coughs> a3, and uh, you had to go back to an open file, so now rook to d1 at some moment. It was played immediately. Uh, rook d1, which will at least exchange a lot of stuff. Queen c7, and another annoying move. What did uh, what did White play here? Knight b5, and it's quite annoying. So okay, you were you felt compelled to take this. So yeah, I don't know how you're. Your knight might be a goner. Uh. Queen c6, hope, hoping for this. Oh. No, I don't know. Yeah, so he just takes this. And after this, uh, I actually did see, I was watching this live, so I did see this move. Um, so I came over and, and uh, I figured it out. But uh, what did white play here to, to finish the game off? This is, a, this is a good little puzzle here. Rook D1. Yeah, so this just this just finishes the game. Um, first of all, if you take uh, here. Second of all, if you play here, <laughs> not only are you losing your rook, but you're probably getting checkmated. Um, and uh, even like this, it's not. Maybe there's a more forceful way, but even this looks incredibly winning. <laughs> um, I don't know. Do you know the fastest way to mate here? Did you look it up? I assume it's mate in four or five or something. Maybe you even just take the rook or something. But okay, I, I kind of like this move. The more I think about it, the more I like that move. <laughs> so okay, but yeah, that was a, a good game, Mario. You came, you came so close. You came so close uh, against a very good player. Um, and yeah, you can keep sending in your games. Well, I'll probably sometimes for even when I'm doing the strategy class, I know people like to have their games analyzed. So uh, if you like this, go ahead and send in your games to info at st. Louis chess club dot org. And uh, maybe your your game will get to be showed up here. Uh, hopefully we get to come back, watch some of these other games in the next coming weeks here. And uh, yeah, so if you have any ideas, some sort of strategic ideas, maybe you'd like to see in a, a class in the next couple of weeks, uh, let me know. Hit like, share, subscribe. And uh, thanks everybody for coming out tonight. Yeah.